Hello, welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us for another segment. In this segment, we're going to be speaking with returning guest, Dr. Brian Kaufman. He's Executive Vice President and Chief Medical Officer of the CLL Society, and he's also a CLL patient himself. He's returning to discuss the FDA's emergency use authorization of AstraZeneca's COVID long-lasting antibody combination named Evusheld. Welcome back, Dr. Kaufman. Thank you for returning. Uh, thank you, Neil, for inviting me back and having a chance to talk about the special needs of the most vulnerable part of our community, those uh, who are immunocompromised or immunosuppressed. Well, for our listeners who aren't familiar with you as a contributor, give us a little bit of professional uh, background and talk about your work with the CLL Society briefly. I'm a retired uh, family uh, physician. And as you mentioned, I'm the executive vice president and chief medical officer and was one of the co-founders of the nonprofit CLL Society. The CLL Society is an inclusive organization that addresses the unmet needs of those with chronic lymphocytic leukemia, or CLL. Mm -hmm. CLL is the most common blood cancer in the Western world, and we try to help people through research. We envision a world in which the entire CL community can equitably access quality education, support, and care to live healthier and richer life, and that certainly has been impacted by the pandemic. With so many people affected by CLL, are they much more vulnerable to viruses, especially COVID-19 being uh, immunocompromised? CLL is a blood cancer, and it's a cancer actually, of the immune cell. It's a cancer that affects our entire immune system, but it specifically targets the cells that make antibodies. Mm -hmm. So we are much more vulnerable to all kinds of infections. In fact, one of the leading causes of death, even pre-COVID in CLL, was infections and followed by second cancers because our immune system doesn't see the cancers coming and doesn't fight them off. So we've always been extremely vulnerable in that regard, and the pandemic has just really highlighted that. Is the CLL Society focused solely on CLL? Are there other patient groups that are equally immunocompromised and more vo- or as vulnerable to uh, viruses such as COVID-19 as uh, CLL patients? Well, CLL patients... Uh, are one of the poster children for the immunocompromised. Mm. And that's where we focus, but we are not alone. And we've linked arms with other members of the moderately or severely immunocompromised. So that would include people like those receiving active therapy for their cancer. Most chemotherapy drugs are very immunosuppressive. Other patients with other blood cancers also are immune suppressed. For someone who's had an organ transplant, a solid organ like a kidney, and especially for people with lung transplants who are extraordinarily vulnerable uh, to COVID infection. And these patients are often taking medications that also suppress their immune system. People who've had a bone marrow or stem cell transplant or other experimental cellular therapies like CAR T therapy with them Mm -hmm. over the last year or two. And they're often also taking medications to suppress their immune system. Some folks are born with immunodeficiencies that are inherited from their family, people with advanced or untreated HIV infections, and of course, people who are taking high doses of medications that suppress their immune system, the most common being corticosteroids. This uh, is only a partial list meal, and patients should really talk with their doctors if they think they're a member of this moderately or severely immunocompromised community. What would you say are some of the social and emotional challenges that patients are facing that uh, we might not realize that they're going through? Yeah. Um, you, you got an hour for me to answer this? I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll try to make it short. You know, it's, it's, the world opens up for others, and social distancing and mask wearing is becoming less prevalent. It actually puts us at higher risk because we can no longer depend on the kindness of strangers, on that society solidarity for to protect its most vulnerable. Uh, And we're at risk because we respond less well to the vaccines. We have more breakthrough infections. And even when we're immunized, we're at higher risk to end up in a hospital to get sicker with COVID-19. And sadly, we have a much higher mortality rate. 
Mm. As a result of this, we're making difficult choices. You know, do we stay safely locked up at home or do we risk visits with family and friends and the concomitant risk of getting sick and dying? For many with CLL are older and these are precious years and we're missing weddings, we're missing birthdays, holidays, and even funerals, you know, let alone a dinner out with friends, Mm -hmm. total events, going to a concert, a movie, a sporting event. So the spreading about we should choose missing out or acting in what we might consider a reckless manner, taking a risk. We are seeing alarming rates of depression and anxiety in the blood cancer community and other immunocompromised communities. Now, what does it mean for this community, the recent FDA authorization of Evusheld for emergency use here in the United States? Well, the EUA, the Emergency Use Authorization of Evusel, is like a lifeline for us in a, a stormy sea. Um, the EUA was approved for PrEP, P-R-E-P, and that stands for Pre-Exposure Prophylaxis. And what that means is it offers us passive immunity in advance of exposure, much like a vaccine does in an active way for those who have a normal immune system. Since we can't make antibodies to protect us, with Evyshell, just simple two jabs given at the same time of these cloned antibodies, we can receive very powerful protection for six months or longer. Mm-hmm. It's similar to the protection that someone with a normal immune system would get through vaccination. Now, I understand you were also involved in the, in the Provent Phase three trial that evaluated Evyshell. How did you learn about that study and become involved in it? Well, when the pandemic was spreading, I anticipated that I would not respond robustly to the vaccines because I'd not responded effectively in the past to other vaccines for pneumonia and other things. And as I said before, CLL is a cancer of the immune system. A fellow physician with CLL in England told me of this international probant trial, and he had enrolled in it as it opened up in the United Kingdom. And it was offering this passive immunity option to protect folks like me. And when it got to the U.S., I jumped at the opportunity. Now, is there something in closing, anything that you'd like to impart to our listeners, you know, who who aren't immunocompromised? What do you wish that they knew, what they understood about uh, CLL and other conditions that cause someone to be immunocompromised? Well, I want to make two points. First, that protecting the immunocompromised protects everyone. Uh, We are all worried about what the next variant of concern is going to be. But variants only can arise when the virus mutates, and that only happens when it's replicating inside a host. But immunocompromised hosts can hold the virus for much longer, even months, allowing for more replications and more mutations. This isn't theoretical. This is what the science is telling us. So helping us not get infected helps others. And I get that we're all tired of masks and social distancing, but and I ask folks to understand that while Omicron, thankfully, would be mild for most people, and that the self-protection from masks and social distancing is far from perfect, it does help protect others. For the immune compromise, we still have a very high mortality rate, you know, close to 30% in some trials when hospitalized with COVID. So we're extraordinarily grateful when strangers make the extra effort to help us. And I would say to my friends with CLL and other compromised, immune compromising conditions, hang on. This too will pass. You know, with the increased availability of antibodies like Evyshell and the new antivirals coming, we're never going to be 100% safe. But there is a time coming very soon, but not here yet, when the balance of the risks versus the benefits, I think, will favor us re-entering the community and living a more normal life. Where can our listeners go online and get some more information about Evusheld and about AstraZeneca and about the CLL Society as well? Well, I'll answer the last one first. Okay. CLLsociety.org is where you're going to find information. We have a whole section, hundreds of articles uh, on uh, dealing with COVID in response for the immunocompromised. And while they're directed at the CLL community, they apply to everyone, whether you're immunocompromised or not. 
Um, the CDC and the FDA, of course, have excellent resources, and AstraZeneca has information on Evyshell specifically. Well, I appreciate you returning and uh, speaking with us again. Hopefully, we'll uh, we'll get another opportunity to speak. Neo, I hope the next time we get to talk, we can talk about how the world has changed and uh, we can uh, all start to reintegrate and live a more normal life. I feel this is achingly close right now. And uh, again, thank you for this opportunity to get the word out about we're in the final stretches. Let's not blow it. Let's protect the people that we need to protect in this last stretch of this race. Absolutely. Looking forward to talking with you again, Brian. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with returning guest, Dr. Brian Kaufman, Executive Vice President and Chief Medical Officer of the CLL Society. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download it, SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.